when nature unleashes her raging elements on man, one basic instinct dominates his soul, the struggle for survival. For he sees the savage force of floodwaters sweeping away his very existence. And he sees a hideous paralysis creep over a once thriving community, all his normal means of food, transportation, shelter, submerged. But the instinct for survival is strong in all living things. And equally strong is man's desire to help others. Your American Red Cross unifies that humane instinct. And in cooperation with states and federal agencies, immediately plunges into disaster relief operations. For these tireless volunteer workers, and for the growing numbers of homeless, food and shelter must be provided. These volunteer canteen workers acting for you are giving more than hot food. They're giving hope and courage and a new understanding of man's selfless devotion to his neighbor. Their reward is found in the gradual reviving of spirit among the shocked victims, in the realization that dry clothing, a cotton, a warm blanket, work wonders in relieving the almost numb terror of the young and the aged. When angry waters leave destruction in their wake, property damage can be measured. But what can measure human suffering? when people see their beloved homes torn asunder, their worldly possessions lost. For the victims, no other agency undertakes as broad a rehabilitation program as the Red Cross in filling the human needs that replace the starkness of disaster with hope and the opportunity to start again. Humanity's struggle for survival has even more terrifying impact in holocausts caused by man himself. For war is not yet a matter of robots or mechanized rockets, but one of violent physical combat, spattering bullets, sudden gaping wounds and blood, dissipating its precious strength on battle-gutted fields. <laughs> In war, not a moment can be lost if a wounded man's life is to be saved. He must have an immediate transfusion of plasma or whole blood, blood given by healthy donors here at home. In combat areas and at battalion aid stations, thin red streams of blood must flow into the veins of men like those you know and love. A pint of blood and another chance to live. A pint of blood that you volunteered to give. Volunteer blood donors are urgently needed in increasing numbers. Blood has become as vital as ammunition. It must be ready. People helping people, giving their time and their blood that others may live. And trained, capable Red Cross volunteers at blood centers all over America, cooperating in a broad program which has increased defense collections from 75,000 pints a month to nearly 300,000 within the year. But more, much more is needed. For besides the needs of the armed forces, the Red Cross is providing more than 140,000 pints monthly for civilian use. Yeah. 
As a volunteer, either donor or worker, you share a deep inner feeling that you're helping to give the priceless gift of life to another human being. For you know that your blood will go quickly to wherever it is most needed. So swiftly keyed has been this operation that whole blood has gone from you to combat zones within six days to play its dramatic part in saving a human life. Could you bear to face the one man who might die because you failed to give? The American Red Cross is people everywhere, performing the tasks of mercy you would gladly do if you were there. Among these are Red Cross field directors, going with the armed forces wherever they may be sent, offering guidance, encouragement, and sympathetic support where it's most needed. The field director and the local chapter home service worker help to relieve the inevitable emergencies that arise from family separations. Frequently, the military authorities request the Red Cross to verify the facts of a problem which may require the man's return home. Returning servicemen receive from Red Cross volunteers a warm reminder that they have not been forgotten. Even though unable to walk down the gangplank as they dreamed for so many months, they are heartened by the sight of the friendly Red Cross volunteers who greet them. Nurses aides and gray ladies with a smile of reassurance for each man, letting him know that the Red Cross is proud of him, will do all it can to help. They perform simple but valued human services to men who are on their way to what may be the toughest fight of all, long months of hospital treatment and rehabilitation. And here, too, the volunteers are at work. Red Cross Nurses Aid serve as responsible assistants to overtaxed trained nurses in military, veteran, and civilian hospitals. Their value lies not only in the work they do, but in the monotony they help to dispel. Gray ladies are there also to help keep spirits up, morale high. They warm the impersonal air with a touch of home and familiar things. Through a varied program of recreational activities, they stimulate lagging interests and keep troubled minds alert. They brighten the present and help men look to the future. They're Red Cross volunteers where they're needed, when they're needed. Volunteers in the motor service provide vital transportation to clinics and perform many other missions of mercy that make up the local chapter's activities. And for future preparedness, these volunteers are ready to give swift, capable service in any disaster which might come. Volunteer staff aides are an invaluable service group. There's hardly any limit to the wide range of activities in which these and other Red Cross volunteers participate. For instance, water safety service, which reduces drownings through swimming instruction and life-saving techniques. The American Junior Red Cross, enrolled in elementary and secondary schools, offers its members program opportunities of local, national, and international significance. Such programs provide training for tomorrow's community leaders.
Red Cross Home Nursing, a practical program in which homemakers are taught by volunteer nurses and others to care for their own when illness comes. Thousands more of these trained people are needed, not only to promote better family and community health, but as a vital civil defense measure. This accent on preparedness is strongly evident in Red Cross first aid classes, too. Knowing how to give immediate care to the injured until the doctor arrives is a crisis which all of us may face someday. A pioneer in teaching improved techniques to save life, the Red Cross now instructs first aiders in back pressure arm lift method of artificial respiration. This method brings much more air into the victim's lungs than the former procedure did. Augmenting training class experience such as this, volunteers gain much practical knowledge in full-scale tests of what might happen should a national emergency arise. Civilians must know how to take care of themselves in a struggle for survival. The Red Cross is supported entirely by voluntary contributions. Volunteers do its work. So, wherever you are, whoever you may be, housewives, professional workers, students, business people, school teachers, truck drivers, industrial workers, you are the Red Cross. For the Red Cross is people everywhere ready to help Train capable people at the scene where need is greatest, ready to do what you would do if you were there. The Red Cross is humanity in action. <laughs>